Hello viewers, I welcome you all to a talk on nuclear models. Today we will discuss about liquid drop model. We all of us know Niels Bohr. He has explained how electrons are distributed outside the nucleus but inside the atom in various energy levels and he studied at length and suggested formula for energy of the electrons and so many spectral series. Bo, after successful explanation of this electron distribution outside the nucleus, he also attempted to guess how the nucleus of an atom could be. So he proposed a liquid drop model. The objective of today's talk is to learn about liquid drop model of the nucleus. The outcomes would be that after learning this topic, learners will be able to compare a liquid drop and a nuclei, outline the properties of nuclei in comparison with that of liquid, explain fission and fusion of nuclei based on evaporation and condensation, discuss the merits and demerits of liquid drop model. In our earlier class, you have studied about various properties of nucleus. A few of them I just present here. The radius of the nucleus is proportional to a power 1 by 3, where a is the mass number with a uniform density. Binding energy per nucleon is almost constant. Just recall, we had a graph having binding energy per nucleon along y-axis and mass number along x-axis. And the shape of the graph was like this. Initially, a sharp increase and except very few elements, some increase and decrease. Then the graph smoothly raised and reached a maximum. And then it was going like this. So for most of the elements in the periodic table, binding energy per nucleon is almost constant, except for elements with very small a. We also have seen neutron to proton ratio is close to unity for small a, but increases progressively with increasing mass number. Then it shows many types of nuclear reactions and radioactive decay. The force that binds neutrons and protons into a tiny nucleus is a short range attractive force. And this kind of attractive force is not existing anywhere else. The precise nature of this nuclear force is still under study to account for the prominent aspects of nuclear properties and behavior. Various nuclear models have been proposed. Such models may be based on the macroscopic properties such as density and constant binding energy per nucleon, which resemble those of a drop of liquid. So this model is called liquid drop model. The second model is the electron shell of an atom. So this model is called shell model. The basic assumptions on which, upon which the liquid drop model is suggested is given below. The material of the nucleus is incompressible and the density of all the nuclei is the same. You know, if I give you some wheat flour and ask you to pour into a bottle, you pour, almost bottle is full now, still little more floor is left out. So, but I ask you to enclose it in the same bottle. What you can do, you can take a spoon and you can give pressure and press it so that the floor gets settled well inside the bottle. There you get some space and you can pour the rest of the floor into it. That means the solid particles are compressible. Suppose instead of wheat floor, if you want to store coconut oil in it. Now you have poured, still little more oil is left out. But now how you did, how you press the powder, the wheat flour, now you can't press the oil and find space to accommodate the rest of the oil. So what do you say? Liquid is incompressible. You can't press it further. Same way, the material of the nucleus is incompressible and the density of all the nuclei is the same. For example, what is density of coconut oil means? You will consider uh, all the molecules of the coconut oil together and say the density. 
the density will not change from molecule to molecule. For coconut oil, that is the density. For milk, this is the density. For groundnut oil, this is the density. So density for that particular liquid remains the same. Same way here, the nuclei, the density of all the nuclei is the same. This property in the previous class we discussed. Then the forces in the nucleus consists of Coulombic forces between protons. Each proton is having positive charge. So there will be a kind of force of repulsion among the protons. This repulsion is known as Coulombic force of repulsion. Also, powerful attractive nuclear forces among the nucleons. The nuclear force will bind the nucleons together. Proton, the nuclear force could exist between proton, 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 neutron, and neutron, neutron, and it is of short range force. Now let us discuss about liquid drop model. This model was proposed by Bohr. According to this model, the nucleus is similar to a small electrically charged liquid drop and the drop takes spherical shape for stability. Same way, nucleus also takes a spherical shape for its stability. Bohr compared a liquid drop with that of the nucleus. When liquid drop takes spherical shape for stability, he assumed even nucleus for its stability takes up the shape of spherical. The nucleons move within this spherical enclosure like molecules in a liquid drop. So if you consider a drop of the liquid, it contains millions of molecules inside. So all the molecules that make up this drop will be moving rapidly within that drop. Same way, the nucleons, the protons and the neutrons within the nucleus will be constantly moving around like the molecules in the liquid drop. The motion of the nucleons with the nucleus is the measure of the nuclear temperature as the molecular motion of molecules in liquid is the measure of its temperature. So what is the temperature of the liquid means? The temperature is due to the motion of the molecules inside the liquid drop. Same way, the movement of the nucleons inside the nucleus is responsible for the temperature of the nucleus. The nucleons always remain at constant distant apart and share among them the total energy of the nucleus. Same way in the liquid drop also molecules are kept at certain distance away from each other and they share the energy. The nucleons deep inside the nucleus are attracted from all sides by neighboring nucleons while those on the surface are attracted from one side only. In this way, binding energy for the nucleons at the surface of the nucleus is smaller than the binding energy of the nucleons inside the nucleus. So whatever I explain here the diagram speaks. You can see a liquid medium. If the molecule is well within, so here everywhere molecules will be present. So this molecule will be attracted by this molecule, by this molecule. So in all directions, they, this molecule experiencing force. It cannot escape from this intermolecular forces and escape from the beaker. Whereas the molecule at the surface of the liquid medium, they experience only the downward force. Here there are no liquid molecules. So if, if this molecule gets some energy from the external agency, it can easily absorb and escape from the liquid medium in the form of evaporation. So the spherical surface which encloses the nucleus may be regarded as similar to surface tension which holds a water drop to the evaporation of particles from the liquid surface. The nucleons are compared with the molecules of the liquid. The liquid molecules which are well within deep inside they are attracted in all directions. They cannot escape from the liquid medium. But the liquid molecules which are at the surface, they, they don't experience symmetrical intermolecular force of attraction. So this receives energy from external agency and escape from the liquid medium. Same way, in lighter nuclei with a smaller mass number, the nucleons will remain at the surface of the nucleus they will have less binding energy so easily they can be removed from the nucleus. The evaporation in a liquid drop takes place when Maxwellian energy distribution within the drop causes a particular molecule to have 
sufficient energy to overcome the intermolecular attraction and escape. Why evaporation takes place? The Maxwellian energy distribution is such that the molecules are rapidly moving, hitting at each other. So some molecules gain extra energy. With that energy, they will overcome the intermolecular force of attraction and escape out. Similarly, in the case of a compound nucleus, the nucleus remain in the excited state until the nucleon or group of nucleons happen to possess sufficiently large excitation energy and escape through the potential barrier. Similarly, the process of nuclear capture may also be explained. For example, if you take ice cubes and keep in a glass tumbler and just leave it on the table, you can see outside the tumbler, some water droplets soon collect. Why it's happening? Because the ice cube inside the glass tumbler is very cold and this chillness will cool the water vapor present in the atmosphere and those water vapor give up its excess energy and just come and collect in the form of droplets at the outer surface of the glass tumbler. This is what called condensation. Same way, a nucleus of an atom at suitable situation will be able to capture particles from external. Now, whatever I said, I'm going to present it in the form of a table, a comparison between a small liquid drop and a nucleus. So first of all, we say compressibility. Already I said a liquid is incompressible. Same way, a nucleus is also incompressible. It behaves like an incompressible drop of liquid. So in a drop, there are millions of molecules. So here, the nucleons inside the nucleus also behave like the molecules inside the drop. Shape. Generally, drop means it is spherical in shape. This is due to symmetrical surface tension force acting towards the center. Even at macro world, if we compare all the planets, mostly they assume spherical shape. In mathematics, you would have studied surface area of spherical shape is minimum. So if surface area is minimum, the stability of that shape is maximum. So planets assume spherical shape because the surface area becomes minimum. When surface area is minimum, it is stable. Same way, liquid drops also assume spherical shape to attain stability. So now we are comparing nucleus with the liquid drop. So we say the nucleus is also assumed to be spherical in shape. Now forces. In liquid, the molecules are held together by short-range intermolecular cohesive forces called Van der Waals force of attraction. In chemistry, you would have studied cohesive force, adhesive force. Cohesive force is the force acting among the molecules of the same liquid. Adhesive force is the force between the molecules of the liquid and the molecules of the container in which they are kept. So here we speak about the cohesive force only. So liquid molecules are held together due to this cohesive intermolecular force called Van der Waals forces. Same way, the nucleons inside the nucleus are held together by short-range, strong, attractive nuclear forces. Next, interaction. The interaction among the molecules will be very, very short range. Same way in the nucleus also, the nuclear force acts over very short range only. Then volume. If you consider the volume of the drop, it is proportional to number of molecules. If molecules in the drop is so many, the spherical shape of that drop will be little bigger. Radius will be bigger. Same way, a nucleus, if the number is more, then it will have more volume. For example, if you consider hydrogen atom and the nuclei of the hydrogen atom, it has only one proton. Whereas if you consider uranium nuclei, it has 235 nucleons. So number of nucleons more, so the radius will also be more. So volume we know 4 pi 3 pi r cube. As a result, volume is also will be more. The volume of drop is proportional to number of molecules. The volume of nucleus is proportional to number of nucleons. So next one, density. 
so i said density of the liquid is the same it doesn't depend on the volume of the drop whether a liquid drop of smaller size or bigger size if it is of same liquid then then density remains the same same way we have already seen nuclear density is also found to be independent of its volume density equal to mass number by volume so by simplification we find that density of all nuclei will be the same movements the molecules of the liquid drop are in continual random motion they will be constantly moving due to the motion they will be hitting here hitting here as a result the temperature of the liquid is coming same way inside the nucleus also the nucleons will be in constant motion and that is responsible for the nuclear temperature protons and neutrons are considered as moving freely within the nuclear volume stability to be stable the the liquid drop assumes spherical shape stability of the liquid drop is due to force of cohesion between the molecules same way stability of the nucleus is due to binding energy of each nucleon correlations intermolecular force among the molecules will be short range there is no long range this molecule can attract this one or the neighboring only not this molecule on some way far away molecule no it's short range same way inside the nucleus also uh, there is no long range correlations between nucleons each nucleon is sensitive to the neighboring nucleons energy distribution the evaporation in liquid drop takes place when a molecule has sufficient energy due to thermal agitation to overcome the intermolecular attraction and escape same way in the nucleus also there is random collisions between various nucleons and nucleons pick up sufficient energy and escape so this model explain how nuclear reactions are taking place and nuclear fission if every nucleon leave the nucleus then that is what called disintegration of the nucleus or we say that nuclear fission condensation property if you keep ice cubes in a glass tumbler and leave it outer surface of the glass tumbler gather some water droplets this is due to condensation that means water vapor present in the atmosphere becomes cool due to the presence of ice cube inside the glass so the water vapor in the atmosphere gives up its excess energy and forms droplets here same way nuclear capture also nucleus at certain suitable conditions could capture nucleons from external surface tension surface tension acts on the surface of the drop the molecules at the surface of the liquid experience less intermolecular attractive force so they gain energy from external agents and can escape in the form of evaporation same way there is a potential barrier acts on the surface of nucleus energy required to evaporate liquid is proportional to its mass suppose you take a vessel and keep it in the oven if you pour one glass water and you want to evaporate means that much energy is required but if you keep some 10 liters of uh, water and you want to make everything to become steam and you have to provide so much energy so energy required to evaporate liquid is proportional to its mass same way binding energy per nucleon is proportional to its mass number binding energy it is proportional to mass number now latent heat of vaporization is constant here binding energy per nucleon is constant so these are the various properties of the nucleus we have stated in comparison with various properties of the molecules of the liquid so this model is called liquid drop model now one question comes why heavy nuclei tend to be made up of more neutrons than protons we know the protons will repel each other so these protons experience coulombic force of repulsion in between if neutrons are there the coulombic force of repulsion can be minimized and the nucleus could be little more stable so to make the nucleus little more stable more neutrons are end up by itself the protons inside the nucleus repel each other according to coulomb's law so the binding energy is decreased the repulsive force with increases with increasing age if you take helium nucleus and if you take a uh, uranium nucleus uranium 235 so 92 protons and the remaining is neutrons 
Now more neutrons are there so that the repulsive force between the protons becoming minimum. So as the mass number increases, the repulsive force will be increasing. So to reduce that, you have more neutrons. The repulsive force increases with increasing A and thereby resulting a smaller value of binding energy per nucleon for large mass number. We can calculate Coulombic repulsive force by comparing a nucleus to a charged liquid drop. If a liquid drop having charge ZD and having radius R means you can say that the Coulombic force of repulsion is equal to charge of the drop divided by 4 pi epsilon naught R squared. Same way if you imagine nucleus to be charged spherical drop you can calculate the Coulombic repulsive force. Since Coulomb repulsion has the effect of making nuclei unstable and hence heavy nuclei tend to be made up of more neutrons than protons. So this question is answered. Merits of liquid drop model. It successfully describes nuclear reactions and explains nuclear fission. The calculation of atomic masses and binding energies can be done with good accuracy. Demerits, however, this model fails to explain other properties in particular. It fails to explain the high stability of nuclei with magic numbers. It fails to explain the measured spin and magnetic moments of nuclei. So with this, I conclude the liquid drop model. Thank you all. I hope you have understood and enjoyed this class. Thank you.